a decade ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before. Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a cuisine! To realize his dream, he started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Roksaburo Michiba. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from all over the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day. Using all their senses, skills, creativity, they're to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a Challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Every battle, reputations are on the line in Kitchen Stadium, where master chefs pit their artistic creations against each other. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, Iron Chef Japanese Rokusaburo Michiba was born in the Ishikawa Prefecture facing the Sea of Japan and thus rich in natural ingredients. In that same prefecture, in the city of Kanazawa, I have recently come across a fine young talent whom people call Little Michiba. The city of Kanazawa is renowned for the many top restaurants with long traditions. And this Little Michiba is serving at one of the very best, perhaps the very best in the whole region, a restaurant called Tsuruko. Let me introduce today's challenger, Little Michiba from the birthplace of Iron Chef Michiba, second generation master of Tsuruko in Kanazawa, Yasuo Kawada. It was his father, Saburo, who developed his son's talent. Saburo once headed the kitchen of Tsuruya in Kyoto, a legendary restaurant of landmark proportions in days of old. He is also the man who made Tsuruko the very best in Kanazawa. Born into a family like this, it is elementary, Yasuo started training as a young boy. At 18, he decided to succeed his father, leaving his side to study at the prestigious Ajikicho restaurant in Osaka. Apprenticing there made me truly open my eyes as to how sheltered I really had been in my upbringing. After seven years of study, Yasuo returned to his hometown and joined his father's side in the kitchen. Each morning, he's there at the market, handpicking the ingredients that qualify for their restaurant. And the nickname, Little Michiba, comes from his free-flowing, ingenious inspiration in cooking. And like Michiba, Kawada has no borders when it comes to ingredients. Caviar, foie gras, and whatever inspires. In fact, calling him Little Michiba may not be appropriate. For he himself is a groundbreaker with a unique style of Japanese cooking. His reputation has gotten around in the Japanese celebrity circles attracting big-name artists to their establishment. Now I'm after the many approaches in Italian cuisine. Somehow I want to find a way to fuse those into Japanese cooking. Another genius born in Ishikawa Prefecture is here to challenge his mentor, Iron Chef Michiba. And now, Kawada, release the energy of your youth and send shockwaves from the sea of Japan. I want to create totally new Japanese dishes to defeat Master Michiba.
Today it'll be youth versus experience, and our guest has lots of experience here. Actress Mayuko Takata, welcome. Thanks for having me. Well, Takata-san, uh, yes, today's challenger runs the best restaurant in Ishikawa Prefecture. Yes. Do you know the place? I've never been to Kanazawa City. I've always wanted to go. I've never oh, had never. a chance. No. Uh -huh. Well, enjoy today. Thank you very much. And our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Doc? Always a pleasure. All right. Time now to bring him on, Chairman Kaga. われらが道場ロックサブローを生んだ食材の宝庫石川県まさかそこに道場の卵と呼ばれる若き料理人がいるとは知りませんでしたしかもその男日本海側一の料亭の跡取りと言いますからまさに料理界のサラブレッド若
with a respectful nod to the Iron Chef by the challenger, a young upshot from Ishikawa Prefecture. Again, 75 minutes today, and I tell you, a victory by the challenger would be sending shockwaves throughout the cuisine world. But, Doc, with the anglerfish, this could be a tricky one for both men. You're right. It's very tricky to handle. Normally, it's hard to fillet these on a cutting board, so most chefs prefer to hang them. Mm. But chefs who are, are used to this can do it on the cutting board, and I think for this show we'll probably see at least one of them uh, hang it. Yes, go ahead from the floor, Shinichirota. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, let you know what the reactions were from both sides when the theme ingredient was announced. First, Iron Chef Michiba said, "Anglerfish? Huh? It's been a long time since I've seen one of these." And Kawada-san mumbled to himself, "Oh man, I bet Michiba-san's probably great at working with these things." <laughs> well, initial reactions from both men not too gung ho, and there's Michiba hanging his. Yep, from. Uh, from the chin area. It's very yeah. heavy. How much does it weigh? Does uh, it I'd guess about 10 kilograms. Oh. All right, about 22 oh. pounds, and I hear they cost about $150 each. That would be about oh, right, yeah. Wow. All right, now with Kawada, and he's got his on the board right there. Yeah, sitting belly up. Giving it a wipe down. Oh, mm -hmm. oh it's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never seen this done before on this okay, fish. Wow. The first slices oh, in, okay, and okay, he's look filleting at, there. Okay, and just beneath the skin, all the organs right there. Okay, now watch this. Oh. Look right there. There, the, the liver you can see coming up. Wow, pretty yeah. big. Whoa. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned the, the fish is $150, but the liver costs about 100 of that. Wow, wow. unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's the liver that really knocks the price up on these things. Mm. And this liver is served at many top restaurants? Very much so, yeah. All right, now the Iron Chef side. Yeah, oh, look at the Doesn't Iron Chef like here. he's cooking with his gloves on? Hey, once is they're he? on, the man's too busy. Can't waste any valuable time just to take them off, you know? Might have to... Uh, Really get down handling this slimy fish a bit later on. Okay, his is hanging, hasn't done anything to it. He'll have to, at some point pretty soon, angler fish taken from the Sea of Japan, a real tester of a theme today, and there's the challenger slicing into his. Now watch this guy, he's very well trained. Looks like it. Yeah, normally it's tough to do it like this, but it looks like he's, he's used to handling this fish. All right, and there he is, and ooh, <laughs> cutting away the nose or its equivalent. Yeah. Slicing it right off. Oh yeah. Now that's the fluorescent part in the water, right? Right, it lures other small fish around its mouth so it can feed on them. Right? Okay, and finally Michiba starting on dissecting his. Yeah, so first he'll take the skin off. Okay, and as Ota reported, it's been quite some time for him to have a go at an anglerfish. <laughs> I imagine, yeah. But uh, from the looks of it, seems a rather routine operation for him right there, slicing and cutting that one open. Looks so slimy. Uh, yeah. Yes, go ahead, Ota. Yeah, I've just been informed that the challenger is specifically singled out the liver and has placed it into his steamer. All right. Already, wow. That, was that quick. big liver, Kawada having gotten that into the steamer pronto, mm -hmm. and now Michiba there. Uh, what you need to do here is pour water into the mouth, about a half a gallon, actually. Really? Hmm? What for? It makes the, the whole fish heavier and more stable when oh, you're filleting. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> Can't do this easily at home. <laughs> no, don't want to try <laughs> this. Belly about sure. to burst right there. <laughs> yeah. That ain't going anywhere. Yes. John Jakowata, talking about Iron Chef Michiba, had some very high praise. He said, I really hey, respect him. Hey, he hey, is hey, the hey, goal hey, and hey, mentor hey, of many hey, young chefs. Hey, this is a great hey, opportunity hey, to learn from the champion hey, directly. Hey, all right, hey, saying all the right things, but left unsaid, I'm here to beat him. <laughs> and now Michiba there on his side. I see him starting to peel away the skin. Right. By the way, the challenger's uh, and father. Is, yes, go ahead. Yeah, Iron Chef Michiba also had some comments about today's young challenger from his own hometown. He said, I know the restaurant Suruko very well, and I've been there, tried their food, but I didn't know about the next generation following in the father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Certainly does now. Mm -hmm. And he's really <laughs> dissecting that angler fish or what's uh. left of it. <laughs> <laughs> Saburo Kawada, the challenger's father, establishing the top restaurant in Kanazawa, and the son, of course, taking taking over the restaurant, which is still regarded as the best one there, mm -hmm. maintaining that tradition. Yeah. <laughs> now back to the Iron Chef's side. Yeah, got the liver hanging down there. There's the liver there? Yeah, that's the true gourmet item here. In okay, Japan. and recall, Kawada got his into the steamer almost right after he cut into it. Pretty much immediately, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're into this battle about eight minutes right now. Wow, and just eight minutes ago it was a fish, and now it's <laughs> now it's the, the place. Re <laughs> now it's the remains of the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fukuzan. yes. Yeah, the challenger has pulled a pie sheet from the fridge, and is working on that to get it ready. All right, Kawada over there. Interesting, I see. Hmm. And now, I'm going to start to roll that, okay. and that would be out of the ordinary, a pie of some sort with anglerfish. Now the Iron Chef's side, the liver, sometimes referred to as the foie gras of the sea. The challenger has pulled a pie sheet from the fridge and is working on that to get it ready. All right, Kawada there. That's interesting. Pie yeah, sheet. And uh, starting to roll it out. Mm -hmm. And that would be out of the ordinary, a pie of some sorts with anglerfish. 
Now the Iron Chef side, the liver right there, sometimes referred to as the foie gras of the sea. All oh, right. It's so big. And look, even the pieces he's cutting are big. And Doc, what are the options now? Well, uh, obviously steaming is uh, one of the main ones, but there are lots of others. Okay, now, hey, check it out. Challenger side, look what we've got. Oh, that's foie gras. The real deal. Yeah, okay, so he'll probably combine the two. Wow, so this is real foie gras. Right, yeah. Huh. All wow. right, had just mentioned foie gras of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is one unusual combination. We will want to see what he's going to do with this and how it will work itself into an angler fish dish. Challenger Kawada, now the Iron Chef. Oh, he's got some milk there. Getting the milk bath, these liver pieces. Okay, I see. <laughs> Interesting. Kuzan? Yes? Yeah, the reason the Iron Chef is washing this with milk is to get rid of any livery smell by drying the blood out. Oh, right. Okay, okay. well, that's exactly what you do with huh. other types okay, of Okay, really? so milk huh. doing the job on that task. That makes sense to me. Okay, mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. see, it looks like some sort of a chemical reaction-like activity going on there. Lapsed. And now with the Challenger, sautéing job, is, is that with butter over there? That's what it looks like, yeah. Okay, and uh, of course, using butter that's not in the japanese cuisine playbook at least in the strictest <laughs> sense but for a guy who's known as little michiba back in kanazawa you'd expect him to walk his own path just as the iron chef himself does both their approaches to cooking and now a little over 15 minutes in kawada beginning to really work and break a sweat right there and we've still got an hour to go in this one <laughs> the chairman giving the men an extra 15 minutes today because of the extensive prep work involved with anglerfish and now on the Iron Chef side, up close right there. Oh, he's got uh, kubujime. Uh, that's cool. Flavoring fish with kelp. And what's he trying to do with this? Well, okay, mainly this fish doesn't have a lot of flavor in its own, so he's trying to add kelp flavor to it. Maybe steam these? Uh, a little but it early might be too early to tell, don't you think? It's it could hard be to sashimi. Say. Yeah, uh, I think so, too. Maybe sashimi. Would. Okay, <laughs> two to one, I guess. <laughs> sashimi. Anybody want to bet? <laughs> well, I'm not positive yet, still. I'm not, I'll not just, very knowledgeable. I'll just throw it out. I'm betting he's going to steam the whole thing. Uh, the okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, the meat that the challenger was sauteing a while ago in butter was anglerfish meat, and now he's got that in a pan along with some sliced onions. Back to you. All right, thanks. Mm, so these are going into the pie sheet? I would guess with the foie gras. Uh, yeah. Foie gras in the pie, then. Okay, yeah. Sure. Okay, sure sense, looks like yeah. it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, there I think, I, think I called that mm -hmm. one. It's going in. <laughs> yep, onto the pie sheets. All right, so the foie gras will and that's inside. angler fish meat there? Uh, yes, yep. And he does have foie gras at the ready. So it'll definitely go in as well. And should taste great, you know, after it melts in that pie. Foie mm. gras and onions. Mm -hmm. and he's rolling it all up here. Completely unorthodox dish oh, in there Japanese we go, the, cooking. Yeah, the foie gras is going in now, as you can see. Okay, Doc, you got it. Hang a star on that one. <laughs> And now, let's get back over to the Iron Chef's side and up mm. close there, floating in the oh, pot. Some turnips, it looks oh, like. Yeah. Yeah. Soaking in a broth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, a uh, clear soup, probably. Huh? Okay, mm -hmm. and piling more of them in right there. Uh, uh, sea urchin is going on top. On Kawada's mm. pie. The mm -hmm. sea urchin roux. Fukuzan! Yes. Yeah, I asked Challenger Kawada where he got the idea of combining foie gras and anglerfish, and he said very plainly, very matter-of-factly, it was inspiration. He also said that with a lot of confidence, by the way. Well, that's what's got to happen here. And Kawada is making it happen in this battle against the Iron Chef and now Michiba. Oh, he's using miso now. In that middle pot there, I think. Yeah, and some Whoa, that Chinese hot yes. bean paste. Mm, yeah, we're yeah. Korean chili paste, I, I can uh, tell. Whatever it is, it looks really spicy from here. Yes. Be a hot one. What the Iron Chef is using is what is called kochijan. All right, thanks. All right, that's the <laughs> Korean chili paste. Mm. And let's see but it's here. not all red. Well, see. anyway, Iron Chef Chen would be happy seeing <laughs> this. <laughs> <He would. laughs> Looks nice, too. Yeah, now what do we got here? Oh, that's a Challenger's pie. Okay, they almost look like tarts there. There's some mm. pastry, the way mm. he's handling those. And inside there is sautéed anglerfish and foie gras. Right, onions as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, uni. Right, sea urchin roe. Mm, yeah. That list is making me drool with hunger. <laughs> it, it, it is luxurious for us. Maybe not for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably grew up on this kind of food, you know. Fukusan? Yes. <laughs> when I told Michiba-san that the challenger was making a pie, he shot back so That's nothing unusual. I think he was trying to sound unimpressed. <laughs> well, you know what? I think the kids got his attention. I, I have to s surmise it on the surface. The Iron Chef's not going to let anyone see that he thinks Kawada's got the depth of skills or experience to even be reckoned with. He's only 28 after 30 all. Minutes have elapsed. 30 minutes gone now, 45 minutes of cooking left. But I think that report from Ota tells us that the Iron Chef is feeling he's uh, really up against a challenge today. Mm, could be. And now this is still on the Iron Chef side here. Yeah, I think he'll add the Korean chili paste into this. Here. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a soup almost. Okay, and yeah. mushrooms to the right, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. 
So one of his dishes taking shape. Yeah, you can start to see the, the beginnings of it anyway. But we still want to know, what's he going to do with the liver? I know, and he's not helping us at all by writing out his menu. That's right, he hasn't written yeah. out his menu so far today. So much prep work, and now what is he doing here with this? Uh, that's the stomach. Of the anglerfish. Right. The yeah. stomach? <laughs> yeah, I think he maybe boiled it once. You know, I've seen something similar to this in a barbecue place. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Right, uh -huh. sure. Okay. And now back to the challenge side, and he's been pretty much unflustered through the first 30 plus minutes of this 75 minute battle, and now into the bamboo well, cups or bowls. What do we have here? What do we have in that one there? Oh, the one he had earlier. Oh, okay, okay. right. The uh, soup with uh -huh. matsutake mushrooms in the broth. And how about that broth? Did that have some uh, anglerfish flavoring to it or not? I, I, I am not sure about I, that I so think far. It, I think it does. Mm, I'm pretty so sure. Too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how about we call it a soup then, okay? Mm. Sure. <laughs> Super a stew, yeah. All right, so one dish confirmed on the challenger's side. Fukusan? Yes. The challenger says he's planning to top a Lion Chef Michibo with a total of four dishes. Back to you. Four anglerfish dishes. All right. Mm. Wow. And now mm. here, removing from the bowl there. Hard to make that out, but is it? Shredded potatoes, perhaps? Could be. I think he'll coat that and then fry it. Okay, patting it together. In the center, what? Is that egg white? That's you what think? it looks like, yeah. yeah. Okay, egg white, uh huh? Makes All sense. right, and now back to the other side. And finally, uh, the Iron no. Chef, <laughs> brush in hand, riding mm. uh, Anko Anglerfish. Mm, he's a brilliant collector. Typical color. character. Oh. I, I doubt many other Tokyo U, U grads could even read that. <laughs> I can <laughs> confirm that for you. I can't read that by myself, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me. Okay, well, the menu is titled Anglerfish a la carte, and let's get that. Uh, Okay, the uh, first one, I think, okay, kelp-flavored uh -huh. sashimi, yes. and mm -hmm. that's going to help us out. Last few times out, he's put off writing his menu until after getting much of the initial prep work out of the way, and now back to the challenger, deep-frying those pieces, the ones with the shredded potatoes, I think, wrapped around on the outside. Mm -hmm. Now, this also atypical of Japanese cuisine. Very much so. This is being very creative. Mm, very cutting edge. How about yeah. neo-Japanese, yeah. we can call That's it. Good. From the young man who's trying to beat Michiba at his own game. Meantime, Iron Chef looks like he's just about finishing up writing that menu. One, two, three dishes, citrus flavor, liver, and... Um, Some sort of deep-fried item as well. All right, a fried item on the menu. Uh, oh, fall kelp. That's what it says. Autumn kelp and anglo fish fried, so it would be a very aromatic dish. Mm. Mm. It does say aromatic on uh, there. Okay, yeah. with yeah. ginkgo uh -huh. nuts and matsutake mushrooms, mm -hmm. and taking his time writing this one, and now adding another dish, I think, what, is that a stew stew pot? All right, Korean style, maybe the kochijang flavored one. I imagine that would be it, yeah. All right, well, that makes four dishes that the Iron Chef will be pursuing is Kawada here. Oh, look, he's already done. This one done. Uh -huh. It's pretty, it's beautiful. It's very nice, it's isn't it? Fall yeah. colors oh. represented there. Yeah, it's a uh, kiyose style in, in formal Japanese. Now, that's what we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Now, here is the stew on the Iron Chef's side. Okay, that's kochijang. Stew pot dish, courtesy of the Iron Chef, wrote it up as a Korean style stew pot. It'll be a bit spicy with the kochijang paste mixed in the broth along with miso. Iron Chef Chen would be proud of that one. <laughs> now back with the challenger and slicing up the liver, I believe. I, I think it has to be, yeah, the anglerfish liver. Yes, sir, right? what was steamed. It's so jelly-like in texture, isn't it? Gourmet mm. item, especially <laughs> for the winter time, and our camera right on top of <laughs> that one, and it is looking marvelous. Yeah, you'll notice it's a bit on the white side. It's actually, when it's perfect, it turns orange okay, a little bit. these mm. livers going for about 100 bucks a pop, and now Michiba's got his liver slices mm. of it. Prime them up right here. Soy sauce for the liver. Mm, sweet yeah. sake and Missed soy, it. maybe. Or maybe well, not. Let, sure. Let's see if we can get a re you know, get yeah. that confirmed. Wait, wait for Oda. Okay, mm -hmm. they certainly look nice being fried up like that. Now Kawada filling them up. Yeah, this mm. is called yuzu. Yes, yeah, right. Into the okay. citrus fruit bowls. Yeah, it doesn't have much flavor by itself. Probably have a sauce for it. Oh, he's pouring something over it. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that's uh, grated radish sauce oh, there. Okay. And some scallions in there, too, and given that nice sauce all the way running down inside there. I bet he has vinegar in his 45 mouth. minutes. All right, yes. 45 minutes gone in the battle. That means we've got 30 minutes to go. Fried liver on the Iron Chef's side. Mm -hmm. Oh, and oyster sauce, maybe? Mmm, mm, smelling real yes, good over here. Flavor in there. That one from the I Iron Chef me. looking and smelling good. I'll bet he has vinegar in this. I think you're right. All right. 45 now 45 minutes gone in the battle. That means we've got 30 minutes of cooking to go on the Iron Chef side. Fried liver. Huh? And oyster sauce, maybe? Mm, smelling real good yeah, over here. Soy sauce flavor in That there. one from the Iron mm. Chef looking and smelling real good like a winner. <laughs> yeah. Kuzan? Yes. Yeah, I have the list of ingredients being used in this frying pan now. Soy sauce, sweet sake, oyster sauce, and white pepper. Oh, okay, okay uh -huh. so Takata-san called it. <laughs> Able to pick up soy and sweet sake. <laughs> 
feeling rather job. proud here. <laughs> and he also did add the oyster sauce. Right. Too, yeah. So you were right, too. <laughs> and for the <laughs> both of you, yes. <laughs> on the Iron Chef side, one of his assistants has been deep frying some things you saw, namely the anglerfish skin, fillet, gristle portions, and parts of the stomach. So just a little oh, bit of fillet will do right. you there. Three types? Uh, no, four types, actually. Four, four, all right. Yeah, okay. So that's the deep fried dish, yeah. Okay, which he had on his menu. The Iron Chef using all of the fish in that one. Yeah, so the Iron Chef there. Uh, now, now the challenger, ooh, eyeballing that up <laughs> close. <laughs> and what's he doing with it? There now, I think. What's he going to do know. with this? I think he already has four dishes. Yeah. Maybe is he going for it? Yes. The challenger says he's almost finished with the four dishes that he was planning on. So amazingly, he says he has time. He's decided to challenge a fifth dish. Whoa. All right, Gosh, starting a new that one was late. Quick. Too. Well, the extra 15 minutes mm -hmm. affording an opportunity. He's been working at a pretty brisk pace, and now the Iron Chef. Let's see, he too has not had to be in any, in any rush so far. No, and this is his kelp flavored fish. Okay. He's rolling it up with scallions. Then. And you two were right, sashimi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and okay, now you remember the stomach that he that he had earlier? Yeah. yeah. He boiled that, and that's what he's using for rolling now, I mm -hmm. think. So it's going to be a great texture combination here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now going back onto the belt of kelp. <laughs> okay, and the reason for doing this is one, to get rid of the excess water and almost cure it, in essence. And the other thing is to let the kelp flavor the, the, the meat of the fish. want to see how this one goes down with the tasters. Yeah, now we saw this one before, mm -hmm. right? Fourth? The fourth or fifth. Yeah, I'm not sure which one. It's served on a western plate. Looks like a miniature look. angler fish oh, being mm -hmm. represented mm -hmm. here. It definitely looks like the fish, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, this, good. this is from the challenger now, the Iron Chef side. Oh, and he's got liver, adding the fish liver in there. Look at okay. that, going into the sauce like that. Mm -hmm. So that's one we saw earlier, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. With okay. wasabi flavor. Wasabi and miso and yeah. giving it a twirl mm -hmm. with the index taste wow. test there. So what do you call it, a uni flavored dish, I guess? <laughs> He's smashing that in there, the liver. Right. Breaking that's it up right, right there. Yeah, well, that, that's the point. By blending the liver and the sauce, you get the meat and the liver, so mm -hmm. like you say in Japan, it's a uni flavored dish. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I've got the idea for that one. Sure, basically using part of the fish for a seasoning or a sauce. Yes, and we have seen liver flavored sauces before, but this is something uh, we could not anticipate seeing it done this way. Now adding something else there, unable to ID that. 15 minutes to go. One hour has elapsed so far. The men given a little extra time for the prep work, but also able to Golden use it for cooking. Yes, his angler fish pastry so out of I the oven. Try that one. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at some of his dishes, you'd be hard pressed to say Kawada's cuisine of expertise is Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> this is a brave new world he's exploring. Yeah. And inside this, the pastry, he's got the foie gras, right? Foie gras is in there, yeah. And so that'll all be melted down. Yep, with sea urchin roe. And now back oh, to the iron chef rice side. Plants here. Rice stalks oh, there. Wow. Yeah, so well, you dip them in the oil and they just start popping. Wow. It makes a great snack. Oh, it's almost like popcorn, really. I gotta see this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that. Now watch this. There, see? Here it goes. Oh, it's popped rice. It's like uh, flowers yeah. blooming, oh, too. It's so pretty. Never Look seen that. this before, Beautiful. how that's done like that. Is this a common thing to do? Well, you've seen it probably as a as a decoration, very common ah, in Japanese cooking. Actually, yeah. I have seen that before. Yeah, it's not unusual for that. Sure. As a decoration. All right. Well, maybe oh. over at your places, <laughs> but uh, I haven't seen that before. I've never seen this process though, and it pops so quickly, That's doesn't it? First time to see it for me, but it yeah. uh, looks like the kids would like doing it. <laughs> yeah, they would. Yeah, I think it's a first for a lot of people, including many of our viewers. <laughs> I don't All think right. Seen it. So the Iron <laughs> Chef showing us another first puff rice, popped rice live. Yes. You may not believe this, but I've just been told Challenger Kawada says. He he even has time for one more dish. <laughs> a sixth <laughs> dish. Number six. Yeah. Incredible. The young man inspired. He's on a roll, not only gunning to take down the Iron Chef, but gunning for a sixth mm -hmm. dish. Try and get it started and done in the last 15 minutes of this one. Try to give the panel quality oh. and quantity. Oh. Look at the Iron Chef here. That's oh, perfect. My. All right. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. Puffed like rice right there. Fall, yeah. autumn right in front of us. Yeah, and that, Gorgeous. again, style is called Kyo style. Mm -hmm. You know, it's food, but it is also mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Very much so, yeah. Yeah. I'd say presentation points are going to be earned for the Iron Chef with that one. Yes. Yeah, it looks like dish number six in the challenger's arsenal is going to be a stew. Mm -hmm. Man alive. Sixth dish right five there. Minutes to go. All right, five minutes left in the battle in what is turning out to be a very competitive affair today. The young man from the top restaurant in Kanazawa in a region of the country which faces the Japan Sea, taking a theme ingredient from those waters and giving a seasoned master from the same region, Iron Chef Michiba, all he can handle in this angler fish battle. 
Michibo's on top of the world of Japanese cuisine. That's where Kawada wants to be. And to get there, he has to beat the Iron Chef. Yeah, and the Iron Chef just pulled out the turnips here. Right there. So they will have fully absorbed the flavor of the broth now. These were stewed for over an hour, weren't they? I believe they, they were. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he added even more dried Benito shavings That's to the broth. Right, yeah. The Iron Chef going to town on this one. Mm -hmm. Seems to be hurrying a bit now. And Takata-san, this has been some exhibition skill-wise, hasn't it, it today? It has. Both chefs are not holding back at all. You know, earlier I thought Kawada might be relying overly so on Western techniques, but now coming down the stretch, I see the whole packaging is indeed Japanese mm. in style. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree with that. With some Western touches, like mm -hmm. that uh, anglerfish pastry in his lineup of dishes. Mm -hmm. But what a show by mm. this young man today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I asked Iron Chef Michiba if he's going to make it on time, and he answered, oh, yeah, I'll make it, I'll make it. But he sounds a little panicky. Back to you. All right, the Iron Chef being pushed by a man less than half his age, a man who respects him but is here to beat him. And for Michibo, the theme ingredient to fish he hasn't really worked with for quite some time. And now a minute to go, the final 60 seconds. Just to cut up and prepare angular fish for cooking is a physically demanding task. Of course, Kawada may not have a lot of experience with the fish. Right there, the Iron Chef's fried liver going to rest atop the stewed turnips. Look for the broth to be poured in here in the last minute of this battle. Iron Chef, though, looks like he's going to have to pick it up on his side. Now the challenger looks like, what, mochi there, I think? Dried rice cakes unwrapped going into his stew. That is his sixth one cooking in an earthenware pot. Iron Chef's side, broth not in there, is going to have to hurry. Less than 30 seconds, or maybe he'll add it when it's served. Bet he never imagined the day when a young chef from his home prefecture would be in here making him cook to the hilt. Kawada's restaurant, the best. His cooking's the best in Kanazawa. And today, to trying to be the best in Kitchen Stadium, the Iron Chef may have underestimated his opponent earlier, but not now, not since about halfway through. When it became apparent, Kawada has what it takes, has the game, has the chance to win here. The final seconds ticking down, and that's it. The cooking's done. The battle is over. Great job in there. Thank you very much. Wow, you seem to be on cruise control. Not at all. No? I'm so satisfied. I'm sure yes. you ended up with six dishes. Yes. How did they turn out? What's okay, I think. Just okay? Yes. A 75-minute battle. Yeah. How was that? Well, the 15 minutes extra really helped a lot. Okay, but you hadn't handled this fish for quite yeah. a while. Did everything go as planned? Well, pretty much. Pretty much? As usual, I guess 93 points. 93, huh? Challenger Kawada finishes with six dishes. First, marinated anglerfish liver salad. He steamed the salted liver and gave it additional flavor with a mix of citrus juice and soy. The firm texture of the liver remains just what gourmets look for. Second, steamed anglerfish soup. Flesh and skin meet up again in a clear soup with matsutake mushrooms. Third, fried anglerfish in potato, with potatoes taking the role as a batter for the deep fried item, locking in all the natural flavor of this deep sea fish. Sautéed anglerfish, the realization of this young chef's inspiration. The gelatinous texture of the fish is the focus, with the asparagus providing a wonderful match. Fifth, anglerfish pie, a new look and a unique taste, with anglerfish, uni, and foie gras, served with a sauce that uses even tomato puree and ketchup. And last, anglerfish stew. Orthodox, yes, but a wonderful way for the tasters to enjoy the conclusion to his neo-Japanese meal. Iron Chef Michiba is offering four dishes. First, kelp cured anglerfish sashimi. Cured by kelp, anglerfish fillets were rolled up in pieces of stomach with herbs and then chilled. He also added anglerfish liver paste in the soy and wasabi sauce. Teriyaki anglerfish on turnip, liver bathed in milk, then fried in a teriyaki sauce, placed atop turnip stewed in a benito broth. Third, fried anglerfish. The puffed rice accentuates the sense of this dish's simplicity. His original sauce made from white miso and Chinese chili paste is superb. Last, Korean anglerfish stew, ending the meal with the dish similar to his previous one, but here with the Korean touch, using all the parts of the anglerfish. Chef Japanese Roksaburo Michiba, a native of Ishikawa Prefecture, as is this man dubbed Little Michiba. He runs the best restaurant in Kanazawa City. Today's challenger, Yasuo Kawada. He's come to Tokyo for a kitchen stadium battle pitting youth against experience. 
Chairman Kaga unveils the theme ingredient taken from deep waters of the Japan Sea, anglerfish. And with an extra 15 minutes to prepare and cook, Challenger Kawada pulls off a set of six dishes. The Iron Chef fighting back finishes with a fearsome foursome. Now the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today for the anglerfish battle are former lower house member Shinichiro Kurimoto, actress Mayuko Takata, and culinary critic Asako Kishi. First, the dishes and challenger Kawada. Mm. Well, I think this is just awesome. You know, the liver maintains a firm texture in my mouth. It's very, very nice. Both the flavor and the presentation are absolutely perfect, I think. It's easy to eat. Maybe a bit too much vinegar in it, though. He's added just the right amount of salt here. Well, and I, I've got to say, this is the ultimate in luxurious foods. Really, it sure is. You didn't have time for a deep frying job, so you just switched to pan frying, which showed good judgment. Quite a good recipe. Thank you, ma'am. Wow. I've already swallowed it. There's no critical analysis needed. This is great. The savory pie and... You know, actually, I was a bit worried while watching him cooking this, you know. Anglerfish is uh, rather subtle in flavor, and I thought it might be overpowered by the other strong elements around it. But actually, it's absorbed the flavors of the sea urchin roe and the foie gras. It's really soaked all of them up, and it's clearly the best tasting ingredient. This is really good. It's delicious. What can I say? This dish deserves a standing ovation. <laughs> And here's the stew, the dish he finished at the end. Grated radish sauce, isn't it, and ponzu? Yes. The flavor is focused. It's very nice. Thank you, ma'am. I don't know if this is the right expression for cooking, but this man's dishes are just explosive. Each and every dish, uh, using a golf metaphor, are really great tea shots, you know? He finds a way to weave these elements together. I think he's really going to create a new set of Japanese dishes for a new era. And now up the dishes of Iron Chef Michiba. Well, I hadn't done that hanging job for uh, quite a while. I didn't know what to do. This resembles the best part of the blowfish. It has a gentle and expansive flavor. And at the same time, it's wild, bold, and profound. You might think that the flavors would become blurred when mixed together but in the mouth I recognize all the different parts it's perfect <laughs> a normal soy and wasabi sauce would be too weak but the liver of the same fish helps us find a focus very well done I think it looks like foie gras and also tastes just like it. I don't recall anglerfish liver tasting so similar. Really, it's melting. Just like top quality food. Yes, yes. Gentle. The turnip and liver, like the Iron Chef intended, are totally opposite in nature. And bitter, with a bit of uh, sweetness there, too. Those two meet each other and actually create their own universe here. And likewise, the Iron Chef dishing out his stew. Wow. Even after all this food, this is really great. I don't have that much liver here, but the stomach, the skin, and the filet. This stock, the stock of the anglerfish, this soup is just really so wonderful. Anglerfish battle, the verdict hanging. We'll find out which way it falls.
素材に国境はないそんな鉄人道場の精神が今日の我がき挑戦者の中にもしっかりと存在していました道場の卵誰がそう言ったかは知りませんが今日の挑戦者は卵どころか良きライバルだったと思います素晴らしい試合でしたそれでは発表します Today, a young chef against the great one who influenced his development, both from Ishikawa, where tradition runs strong and deep. Challenger Kawada taking tradition, tweaking it, and creating Iron Chef Michiba. He's had a career in culinary innovation. Who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Tezujin Michiba no Kamuro! It's the Iron Chef! Michiba wins it! The Iron Chef able to hold off this young man. Job today by Kawada doing justice to his restaurant, his region, and his nickname. But the Iron Chef takes it, and look at Michiba beaming. If anybody's going to be little.